Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds. Today, James and I are talking about my favourite team in the IPL, Royal Challengers Bengaluru. They've changed their name. They're no longer Royal Challengers Bangalore. They've taken the anglicised version and, and converted it back to the, the proper true form Bengaluru. And I don't know, every year I sit here and I think maybe it's RCB's year. And I'm feeling the same this year. Who knows? Who knows what could happen? I mean, we've had a lot of changes to our squad. We've had changes to the management, brought in Andy Flower as a captain, uh, as a coach, which I think is going to be a good thing. And I'll probably give my reasons in a bit. But I want to hear from you, James. What are some of the strengths of this Royal Challengers Bengaluru squad? Um, I think they've got strengths in their top order, definitely. Top order batting is looking strong. Um, and I I do have to already add in a bit of a weakness in that, in that there are so many good options that there is almost a struggle in balancing. And for me, um, you almost have to end up dropping your captain a little bit to get your absolute best squad out. Um, but th- there are some really, really strong top order options. I think Faf Duplessis and Virat Kohli, um, you've got Will Jacks on the bench, who I think is an absolute superstar. Glenn Maxwell, Rajat Patidar is really quality. Um, and then Anand Rawat, he's proved that he can do some stuff at the top of the order. So there's there are some really, really nice options there. Um, I also like the look of Sarav Chauhan, who is a young uh, Gujarati. And he's got some decent numbers. Again, that like... Um, like a lot of these young players that have come through the sort of side Mushtakali Trophy area, they haven't got a whole lot of experience. They haven't played a whole lot of games. But of the 19 games that he has played, he averages 29 at a strike rate of 152, um, which is very good. You know, th- th- you can't complain at those numbers. So there is there is a little bit of depth there. Um I'm interested to know, I'm going to ask you, a biased man, what are the weaknesses from your perspective? Um, For me... You can can say some more, you can say some more nice things if you want to (laughs) first. Well, (laughs) I'm, I think that the more I've thought about the Cameron Green situation, I I can see that that is such a big benefit for us because he's, he's such a good quality bowler that he can bowl four overs. And that's going to be really good for us. I mean, if, if you get hit for a few, then early on in the season, then I can see that happening. But as he gets more into his stride, I can see him being a really good option. We saw how he grew last year with Mumbai and kept getting better. And then also he's he scored an IPL century last year. And that takes a lot for your first season. And so I, I think seeing him in the middle order is, is just massive for us. Um I think there's a lot of flexibility with RCB squad. There's lots of different ways that you could sort out the team. Um, However, saying that, depending on how you balance the squad will determine how much depth batting you've got. And I think if our top six, seven doesn't fire, then we we could be looking at some low scores because we we don't bat that deep. We don't have like a recognized uh, bowling or rounder coming in at eight unless Tom Curran plays. Um, so so it'll be interesting to see how we fit that around. Um, and the other one is inexperience of, of spin. Um, we've got Himanshu Sharma, who is an unproven leg bo- leg break bowler. Uh, Karen Sharma, who is a bit hit or miss when it comes to his leg breaks. He bowled okay last time. Uh, and we've got Mayank Dagar, uh, who came in. And we've got quite a few young spinners. And I'm hoping that with RCB, with their spinners, it will be a case of like Mumbai, one of these young leg spinners or off spinners comes in and actually makes a real impact and is does really well, has an economy of like eight and, and takes quite a few wickets. So that's what I'm hoping for, but it'll be interesting to see um, how that goes on. Uh, would you agree with that or, or have you got anything else to add in terms of the weaknesses? Yeah, I think balance is the hardest thing for me um, because you've pretty much got three locks in the top five and, and and they are over overseas slots. You know, Faf Duplessis, Cameron Green and Glenn Maxwell are all guaranteed to play and they are incredible players, but it means that you've only got one overseas slot 
to help that bowling attack. Obviously, Cameron Green can bowl, but he's not like a super experienced bowler. So, you know, he, he can definitely do a job and I think he'll, he will take wickets and bowl well, but he can't lead a bowling attack. Um, and obviously you've got Mohamed Siraj, who's a proven performer, but who do you play after that? Like they spent quite a bit of money on um, Alzari Joseph, who offers you express pace, but can be expensive. Exactly the same with Lockie Ferguson. And then they've got Reese Topley, who I think is the most likely starter out of those lot, but he's obviously injury prone. Mm. Um, and yeah, there's there's only one of them. And then you're absolutely right with the, the sort of the lower middle order. I think it's going to have to be some inexperience there. Um, I've personally got like Akash deep in at eight because I know that he's he he can bat a little bit, but I've seen him do better at first class than I have in in T twenties. So I I'm really really interested to see the balance of squad that they come out with for the first game, which mm. is, I believe is against Chennai, isn't it? First yeah, it's game of game the one, game one, yeah. So. Yeah. That's a it's gonna be a big one. Um but I'm I'm super, super interested to see yeah. what balance they strike because I think like the best balance would have potentially someone like Will Jacks come in or not an overseas opener at all, and you'd have um like you said, Tom Curran in at kind of eight or seven or eight, because I think he's come along with a lot with his batting recently. Um he can obviously be expensive with the ball, but he's a proven death bowler when he when he's on his game. So let's let's go into some twelves. Um, yeah. What's yours? I, I'm still not final on it. If I'm honest, okay. uh, I'm still thinking about it lots. I guess because it's is the team that I'm following closest, so they're the ones that I'm kind of thinking, oh, that might work. Um, but I think that's quite exciting as well. We don't have a dead set eleven. We've got backup players if needed. But I've got Kohli and Dupasi opening the batting. Um, I've then gone with Rajat Patadar at three. It's great that he's back in the side. He offers a lot more to the batting. Um, Glenn Maxwell at four, Cameron Green at five, or Cameron Green four, Glenn Maxwell at five. They're they're kind of interchangeable depending on the situation. Um, I've then either got Sarav Chauhan or Suyash Prabhadesai coming in at six. Um, both very talented players. And Dinesh Kartik at seven, uh, see how he does in the finishing role. Uh, and then this is where I, I struggle a bit to think about where to fit players in. Um, I actually think that we kind of need to go with more fast bowlers than spinners. So Vijay Kumar Vaishak, who made his debut last year and is in really good form and is actually a decent batsman as well. He scored a century um, of late in the Ranji Trophy. Um so I've got him coming in at eight. I've then got um, Mohamed Siraj at nine. I've got Karen Sharma at 10. Um, and then in terms of the overseas fast bowler, it's either Alsari Joseph or Reese Topley at 11. And then in terms of the um, the impact player, it's probably going to be a batsman. So maybe Mahapal Lomro or the other one out of Chauhan and Prabhadesai coming in as the number 12 um, but yeah, there's loads of different ways I could play it. I was thinking maybe Mike Dagart could come in or Himanshu Sharma for Karen Sharma. <laughs> Lots of different options. Yeah, I I had exactly the same top seven as you. So I had Sarav Chauhan and Dinesh Kartik um, occupying six and seven. I did then, uh, it was just quite a shallow batting lineup um, just because of the balance of things. Mm. But I think you could have a quite good bowling lineup um, it just you obviously need your top seven to fire, but I had Akash Deep at eight because he's got somewhat of a record. I think he only averages ten in uh, in T twenties. It's, it's, it? it's, it's a strike rate of over one forty, so it's mm. not terrible. Um, I think it's more than Vijay Kumar Vishak. Um, yeah, in twenty twenties for sure. Yeah. Yeah, which, um, yeah, I think he only averages like six. But you're right, he does, he's got ability with the bat. Um, he, he could potentially like hold up an end, stop me collapsing. And then I had Mike Dagar at nine, Mohamed Siraj 10, Reese Topley 11, and then Khan Sharma at 12, just because I think you need, you do need a couple of spinners. I mm. guess that Glenn Maxwell does do that for you as well. But 
with that, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, seven bowling options, including Green and Maxwell. So mm. that straight away is quite a good thing. But uh, yeah, you could definitely stick in another batsman for a bowler if that is yeah. the case. I mean, one one of the things with RCB is that a lot of our uncapped Indian players are kind of unproven in the side Mashtakali Trophy. So mm. they haven't had as much game time as some other of the young uncapped Indian players. So it'd be interesting to see how the RCB scouts have gone there um, and to see how players like Mayank Dagar, who was picked up as a replacement for Shabazz Ahmed, um, whether he... Because we don't have the stats which say he's a great batsman. So for us in England, not having that footage or those stats, it's quite hard to tell a player. Whereas like Sarah yeah. Chauhan, we have some stats available to tell us that he's a good player. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting. And if you know anything, let us know in the comments. Um, and just to finish, like I mentioned earlier about Andy Flower being coach, the last two seasons he's been with Look Now Super Giants, managed to get them into the playoffs both times. Um, they just missed out with losing the Eliminator both times. But he likes to stick with a very settled team. Look Now didn't use many players across the tournaments when he was in charge. And that's something that RCB have had, had as a weakness over the last however many seasons is they use a lot of players in their squad. So having mm -hmm. someone like Andy Flower in to kind of steady things, I think that would be much of a, a big advantage. And another thing that I think with RCB is that they have one of the best fielding sides in the tournament. And that goes a long way to, to getting far in these competitions. So I've got high hopes. I think like with all our teams, we're going to put them in to make the playoffs. I'm optimistic. I'm putting them at fourth. Um, realistically, they're probably a mid table team. Um, five, six, seven. Uh, I don't know where you have them. Yeah, I mid table, so eight. Um, I yeah, just that's, that's bottom table, but <laughs> oh, right, lower table then. Yeah, yeah, Low, yeah. lower middle order. Um, yeah, I, I had them coming at eight. Just there are other squads that I think are slightly more balanced. It's just like I say, it's um, it's trying to get teams in the same. I think the easier that you can visualize what a starting eleven or twelve is mm. the more i like i'm comfortable rating that team yeah um in because i think i've got sunrises at seven that's a bit of a spoiler alert for a future video but they are exactly the same in that because they've named an overseas captain and one that isn't necessarily the like in the 11 best players for the for winning a t20 it means that it, it it's slightly harder to balance the squad with all the players that you've got. And I think that's the only reason. I, same thing I always say with every single one of these videos is that I could be absolutely wrong. Any team could be anybody. And on their day, um, there are match winners in every single side. So there's never a, there's never a really weak side. And that's that's obviously a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I just think for, for RCB, there are a couple of issues in balancing. And also I don't think there's proven death bowling either, which mm. could prove to be a little bit of an issue if they yeah. don't we take do that those. every season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if they don't take those wickets up top, then could be a bit of an issue, but we'll see how it goes. I'm super excited to see it. Um, don't forget to like, and subscribe, tell your friends about us. We appreciate all the support they've been having so far. And if you really want to help us out um, and get some, get your hands on some exclusive content and have priority replies, early releases, badges, emojis, other good stuff, become a certified cricket nerd, uh, become a member. The link to that is in the description down below and we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.